Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I've got an idea for a laser cut house. So let's get cracking. Friends, we are in Autodesk Tinkercad, and I want you to hit Create New Design. Let's call it Laser House and put our initials after it. That way, when it's time to cut it, it's easier to find. We need to go to the grid, and I want you to change this to 470 because this matches my Glowforge. And I want you to make this one 280. Now, the only way I can change those is to backspace. This is about the same size as my cardboard, so on either of my laser cutters, this will work just dandy. For this first project, I'm going to tell you stay the exact same sizes as me. Once you've mastered this, you can make any size you want. So the first thing I want is 120 this way, and I want it to be 4 millimeters thick because that's how thick my cardboard is. And then I want it to be 70 in this direction. I'm going to make this brown so it looks a little bit like cardboard, and this is going to be one wall of our project. We're going to bring out another rectangle, and we're going to make the front of our project. Once again, let's change it to 4. And then for these measurements, we're still going to do 70 in this direction. You'll notice those match. And then this side is going to be 80, and press Enter. And once again, pick your brown. We are going to duplicate these later. Right now, we're just going to make them so they connect. Let's use Fit View, which is the letter F, and we're going to attach a piece to this side. Bring out your part, and once again, make it 4 millimeters thick. And we're going to make it 4 millimeters this way because it's going to be a tab that connects. And then I want it to be 30 millimeters long. Grab these two parts and click Align. Make the brown one the master and choose the middle. Let's rotate and look at it from this corner. You could just hit the cube. And we're going to use the sweet work plane command to find this flat edge. It gives us the orange work plane when we click on just the red one. So notice I click away so I only have the red one. If I press the letter D, it drops it. And you can see that is perfectly aligned. Let's do Control D and look at it from this other corner put our work plane on this spot and if you hit just the letter D that duplicate drops across to the other side we have just made the tabs for our side I'm gonna hit work plane and click this blue edge and then let's select those three items and group them and we have got side one and actually side two built so now let's make the cutouts bring out a box and we're going to change it up a little by making this five. What that does is makes it easier to grab as we use it. We're going to make it 30 in this direction and once again, four millimeters to match our cardboard. When we grab the two items, we're going to hit a line. I'll make the brown one the master and I want the edge and the middle. I am going to do control D and just move a little bit to the other side. If I zoom out with my scroll wheel, I'm going to grab those two pieces. Notice I skipped that one. I'm going to do a line, and I want it to go to this side. I'm going to take those three parts, and I'm going to group them. So now these two pieces will fit together later when we build our house. Now let's make a roof section. When you bring this out, once again, four millimeters, because that's the thickness of the cardboard. And then I want you to change this to 140. And then here's the magical number. We're going to do 50 here. That's going to have some sweet math connected to it, but I'll show you that in a minute. Right now, let's bring out our holes. And 5 millimeters thick, once again, so it's easier to grab. And then in this distance, it'll be 30. And because our cardboard's 4 millimeters thick, we're going to make it 4. Grab the two, click a line, and we want it to go right to that edge. We're going to move that in five millimeters. I think the easiest way is to click on the five millimeter nudge, click it once, and nudge it in. Let's do duplicate, which is also control D, and let's move it all the way to the other side. Grab those two parts, make the red one the master, and go to the edge. Once again, click just on that piece and go one click in. And now we can simply grab those three parts and group them. And we have got the three main sections of our house created. 
Friends, it is time to add the roof, but we're going to use a sweet technique to make it a little quicker. First, put your work plane right on the edge of that roof spot. Bring out the roof and notice this way it's aligned the way we would need it for our roof. Let's put the work plane back on the ground by hitting that blue edge. Making sure we hit D to drop this to the exact height. And let's change this measurement to 4 so it's the same thickness. We want this measurement going across to be 80. And then this distance coming up the edge needs to be 30. If we hit a line and make this the master, we have just aligned our roof. And because this is 30, 40, because of the awesome Pythagorean theorem, we have just made a 30, 40, 50 triangle for the hypotenuse. That is important, friends, because remember, this is 50 across. So now we're guaranteed they will fit. If we select these two and group them, notice there is no seam, so that means we aligned it perfect as well. Friends, it is time to create the little tabs that will hold this in place. Get it so you can see this edge, click the work plane, and bring the little fella out. We're going to bring out a box, and quickly we're going to change its measurements. It has to be 4, so it's the thickness of the cardboard. And then this way, we still need to use 30. And then in this dimension, we still need to do 4 because of the cardboard. I'm going to put the work plane back to the ground, and then I'm going to do drop so it's at the right spot. I'm going to do that same step quickly over here. There's my rectangle. Bring this dude out. 4 enter, 4 enter, and then along this side, it needs to be 30. Now to get these in the right location, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to use the ruler. When you bring the ruler out, get it as close as you can to that edge. I'm going to shut off the grid for a second, and I'm going to bring the little circle right here to this corner. Notice that line lines up really good. If I click this red part, notice it tells me that this distance is 8.89. We want it to be 10. It's that easy. I'm going to look at this side, put my work plane here. I'm going to put my ruler on this corner. Once again, the grid is off, so I can just line it up with that little spot. I'm going to click on the part I care about, and it shows me that distance is 3.47. We are going to type 10 and press enter. We have just split the difference on these perfectly. I'm going to put the work plane back down on the ground. And we need to make sure that these are all aligned. If you were looking closely, this one was floating. But now we'll put it on the ground. And then when we group those three, look at that. No seams, so it means we did it perfectly. Friends, just like that, you have built the parts for a laser cut house. You don't have windows yet. You don't have a door yet. But let me show you how this gets arranged, and I'll let you make those cool things on your own. So first, let's make sure our grid is back on. I'm going to set it to 5. I'm going to bring this up to the upper left edge. I'm going to bring this up beside it. And I need a pair of those, so I'm going to select them both and do duplicate and just bring them down. Always arrange everything so it's used most effectively. If you make a mistake, you can just do Control Z. I'm going to nudge that up with the arrow keys. I want to make sure those two pieces are lined up, so I'm going to do a line and do the left edge. I'm going to have these two aligned, and I'm going to do the right edge, so they're good. I think I can go one cut closer, and if you look at that from the top, those will cut fine. I'm going to put one of these over here. And I'm going to do Control D, and I'm going to put the other one over here. To be even more efficient, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. So we're using the cardboard super efficiently. Let's add a cool little door to our house. You can pick your own numbers. I'm going to do 25, and I'm going to go 50 high. I'm going to arrange those so they line up with the bottom of my house. I don't want to put it in the middle. I want it to be offset. I think that's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to make it 5 millimeters thick so it's easier to grab as I play and adjust it. I am going to cut out a window. I'm going to stay with the normal size. 
But once again, I'm going to make that five. I'm going to line those two pieces up, so I'm going to shift click them so it says two shapes. I'm going to make the door the master, and I want them to be the same spot. I'm going to add that window in other locations by doing control D. And then I'm just going to grab it and bring it over to the other locations I want it. I'll do control D on that to arrange it. I could make those a group, so I'm going to shift select them and make them the same spot vertically. And friends with those grouped, I'm going to select them and I'm going to do a line to the middle. And then I'm going to click on them, make sure my grid is on five, and I'm going to do one click up. I'm going to duplicate those little pieces, hold down shift and click this part. Once again, I'm going to click a line and make it the master. Same trick, I'm going to center them and then go one click up. So those two parts should be identical. Let's do group. Let's do group. I've got windows the way I want. I'm going to take this and do control D and I'm going to bring one down for later. I'm going to do this and do control D and bring one down for later. And then I'm going to grab these parts and I'm going to group them. So notice this is entirely gone. If I just bring out another part, I'm going to make it solid. It will make a door that fits in that hole. I could also make windows that go in each of these. Let's make that a solid. I want to be able to put in the sweet little window panes. Let's do it like this. Bring out another box, hold down shift and squeeze it and type six and press enter. Take that piece and do control D. Let's make the nudges faster by switching to two. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, five nudges. Control D. One, two, three, four, five nudges. Make that cool new part a group. And let's align those two pieces. Align, make it the master, center, and center. And friends, when you group these, you will have a laser cut window pane that will fit in there when you're done. How cool is that? I would need one, two, three, four, five of those in my current project. So I'm just gonna do control D, switch back to my five millimeter nudge. There's two. Control D, there's four. Once again, using my cardboard really wisely. Let's add one more for my project. Once again, you can have more of these. Alrighty, friends, so I am going to stop here and let you guys push it to crazy awesome levels. Friends, it just dawned on me that I don't have an overhang or an eave for this building. So let's quickly switch back to five millimeters and then do four down clicks. So we move down 20 millimeters. We can bring out a cube and set it right down here on the edge. We're going to make it four millimeters thick, so that way it'll match the exact part of the other. I am going to align it to the left. So if we make that the master, it lines right up. And then we just need to stretch it to the exact length of the other part, which is 140. I need that same amount down below, so I'm going to do Control D. Hit W for work plane so it lands on that edge. And if we hit D to drop, our two parts are now together. And then I'm going to group them. Notice if you don't have a seam, then you really made the parts with them connected. So now we will have our cool design. I'll put the work plane back down on the ground where that roof will cover all the way to here, but it'll also overhang, which makes a better product. When you do finish and you're in my classroom to laser cut it, what we need to do is hit export and we need to use SVG. Remember, we always look for, under Quick Access, the STL folder. Once again, we are saving an SVG this time, but make sure it has Laser House and your initials. And once you save it, we can run through the steps to put it through either of our laser cutters. Right now, friends, I am not at school, so I won't be able to cut it out, but stay tuned. That video will be coming soon. Friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button, and last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.